Hey there, and welcome back to Elden Ring. Uh, we're going to continue some more exploration of Limgrave. Really, the first thing I'm going to do is go get the map because, man, it's just terrible not having a full map of the area. And then from there, we'll hit a couple more, like, interesting, you know, points of interest. Uh, maybe a couple dungeons, depending on what's going on. Just so we can kind of see, like, what else is happening around here and start getting together some more, like, lore pieces. Uh, like I said in the last one, I don't think... We're definitely not going into Stormvale this time. Uh, but we are going to clear out the rest of, like, the main things in Limgrave. That's the goal, anyways. So let's go ahead and go get ourselves the map. Now, the good thing is, too, heading south, we can see that there is a minor earth tree there as well. And actually, if you keep looking around, like, you can see, like, there's trees right there, which tells us that there's something there. Like, like I said, the power of observation in this game, like, there's a cave there. See, there's a cave. There's so much you can discover in this game just by, like looking it's really impressive it's the same in any of the other games that from software does like if you just take a second to really like look you'll notice things that are like maybe supposed to be kind of hidden and some of them too is just like there are things that guide you to it you just don't think about it like oh there's a little beetle dude for me to follow and the it's supposed to guide you off into something else and uh what is this this is something new i've not seen anything like that before says to examine you know what this looks like to me in the round table hold there was like the a staff kind of thing or something or plant that there was a statue guy was holding and that's what it looks like to me except this one's got like candle things three four candles lit out of one two three four five oh, how many is that one two three four five six seven eight nine nine candles but only four lit interesting oh and then a dude shows up now, he's not like the regular ghosts. Like, the, like he looks a little different to me. And he's got... Because the other ghosts are more, like, bluish. Like, when we see them in the dungeons and stuff. That's a bear. And that over there is another bear. A really, really big bear. <laughs> and they are uh, fun to fight. Gold-tinged excrement. And look, there's our map thing. What does the uh, excrement have to say to us? Gold tinge, highly stable substance. Doesn't dry out, nor does it lose its customary warmth or scent. For better or worse, it remains as it is. Interesting. That's fun. There's some more. Got ourselves some bear scat. Map Limgrave East. There's an item there, and I want to get it, but I also don't care to piss off the bear right now. Especially because we're trying to follow this guy. So we're just going to ignore him for right now and hopefully he will ignore us now uh, we have an icon showed up on our screen that's to summon so for some reason we are able to summon things and look there is a broken carriage again and you can see figures hanging out to like ambush that dude also if you look at him look at look at his eyes they're glowing like the skeletons so he has like extra runes like we because when we break his skull that has like that glow in it we find a rune which is you know, runes for us. So you can, uh, you know, make an assumption from there that when the enemy's eyes are glowing, they have more runes with them. They have an additional rune or something. And there's one of those, see, there's another one of those crucifix things and underneath them, guarantee it's another rune. So it's like these guys get crucified and then as they like die or hang there, their runes drop like blessings. And at the top, like what's the top of it like? It's not a straight line across, it's a curve, like the rune arc and the rune arc it, as it described is at the base of the elden ring a like like a basin for collecting the blessings of the elden ring and so in many ways it almost feels like the same thing there right now he takes us to some runes and then he goes away and we hear some howling and there's a dude up there can't really see him from here we'll have to angle a little differently maybe try here huh a big old cloak. It's perched up there. Oh, Mistwood ruins. Oh, and there's a bear. It's howling. Uh, Trina's lilies. What do those do? Oh, oh, bear's moving. All right, we can take him. We'll be good.
to get a good swipe. Maybe one more. Ooh, I mistimed it. Some of the delay between your uses of the uh, square off ability. Like, I wish they would float a little bit faster, like in uh, Dark Souls 3. Like, I really feel like they float a lot better there. Uh, but good thing is we have that Assassin's Dagger on, so we're going to heal up from that. Not as much as I wanted. No, thank you. I do not consent. Come on, buddy. Man, he is absolutely wrecking this place. We'll read about the Trina's lilies once we take care of this dude. Probably would have clipped this there, so we needed to make sure we rolled. Nice. Ooh, I rolled way early there. Get another swipe. Not enough to stagger him. That's okay. Get him one more. Nice. Beast blood. All right, some interesting things there. Let's take a look real quick. We've got ourselves the beast blood. Let's read that first since it's there. Fresh beast blood glinting with gold. Okay. Material used for crafting items found by hunting carnivorous beasts. The glimmering blood never rots or decays. Much like how the poop, the excrement, it never dry out and it doesn't lose its custom. So it's like it's gold. So the gold is somehow preserving it. Which is interesting, which makes sense. You know, blessings of gold and all that stuff. It's very important. Now we've got the Trina's Lily. And look at that. It's got kind of a, a wilty look, kind of misty things. Which a lot of these things have this kind of misty look. Like that one. And the other uh, bells, the glove warts. A light purple water lily that is on the verge of wilting. Used for crafting items. Exceedingly rare. A symbol of faith in St. Trina. Dulls the senses, preventing agitation. Uh, this will all lead us to an Axe Talisman, which is nice. I actually do like that one for some strong R2 builds. Using that will allow you to have, like, strong, heavy attacks. The uh, actual description, I don't think it adds anything to us. Ah, it does. The Lord who led the Long March bore an axe, and his loyal warriors honored him by wielding axes of their own, making them very effective at de dealing decisive blows. So, Lord of the Long March. Interesting. Uh, we actually skirted past. We can see it right there. There's the Erd Tree on our map now. So we can go check it out. I say Erd Tree. The minor Erd Tree. And look how it said that blessings collected at the bottom of uh, Erd Trees. Minor Erd Trees. There's a basin collecting a blessing. Spike cracked and green spill. So just like it said, they do collect at the bottom of minor Erd Trees. Now we got a beetle dude here, right? I've taken out some before, but... Look at him. He's got a symbol on him. It's hard to see here because he's he's rolling. Uh, there'll be some better ones to see or at some other point. But if if I had actually stopped and like zoomed in, I believe it looked like an eye on him. And we've seen an eye icon before. Some eye like symbolism, right? And that's with that dude in uh, the round table hold. Which I don't believe he said his name. But uh, there is somebody there. He had symbols like eyes on him. So I think those are somehow connected. And we find ourselves another merchant. Let's see here. So he's also got Trina's lilies. He's also got blue gold kite shield. The design represents a earth tree foreground against a blue sky. Very nice. And look, St. Trina's arrows. Arrow carved to resemble, resemble a withered water lily. Like we just found earlier by that bear. And right here, Trina's lilies. Uh, afflicts targets with a powerful sleep effect. Priests of St. Trina use these arrows to spread their teachings. The sweet oblivion of sleep can become quite the habit. Interesting. So, like, this says dulls the senses, prevents agitation, and that bear was sleeping when we found him. So, you know, it fits. And since we started picking those flowers, what happened? He woke up. Uh, we're going to follow the road a little bit further because I know there's a side of grace over there. And we're going to go get that. And then I want to take us to another section. Ah! What are these big beast guys, man? They're like... Kind of like simian ape-like dudes, right? And even their feet. Like, if you look at the feet on that dude, look. See, it's like close to being a hand, you know, like an ape of some kind. And if we can go and we can find maybe a good look at one of their faces. I mean, look at that. 
Yeah, he's got, and he's haired like he's kind of like a beast. Oh, yeah, look at that dude. Huh. Uh, and a ghost. Interesting. The demi humans wax wroth. Now their master has been taken. Where are you, Lord Kenneth? The knight bedeviled by blood. So, demi humans or queen's been taken. What did we we fight some like simian like dudes? It would kind of make sense if those were like demi humans, like not quite human. I mean, demi makes it seem kind of it's pretty you know demeaning in a way. But Lord Kenneth, so there's somebody missing here, and there is a little castle thing like we saw there. But we aren't going to deal with that yet. And that says Blyze the Half Wolf. Interesting. Uh, let's go ahead. We're going to go to a different section here first, and then we will check out that area. And there's a whole pass along here. We're going to maybe traverse along here and kind of check out some of this spot. Um, we find ourselves some more demi humans right here, and then somebody's calling out. Ah, see, there's, there he is. Man, it's almost like I knew that the person would be here. <laughs> the Counter-Strikes. Man, I really like the Counter-Strikes. They do so good against the enemies here and with that Assassin's Dagger, man. We can be constantly getting HP back. And there he is. Look at that. He's got all kinds of robes. Yeah, very nice. Nice looking. He, and they're, like, actually well-kept, right? Unlike many of the other noblish type things. But he also is not all decayed and withered like many of the people. Like, he has kept his sanity. Did. But what? What's wrong? No. No. The help is very much appreciated. Even from a tarnished. Yes. Tarnished don't seem to have a good reputation. Nobility is no prerequisite to serving the true order. Might have heard of me, Kenneth Height. Next in line is the rightful ruler of Limgrave. Oh. Young Tarnished. I would have a boon of you. I want you to take back my fort. It lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. Right, we saw that. The commander from Stormvale took it. A fool and plumb man to boot. Simply obsessed with blood. Interesting. What are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? Wouldn't hurt. My fort lies to the... Oh, I see. You wish to know the reward? Sure. Fret not. The great Kenneth Height is known for his considerable largesse. Largesse. His celebrations will be lavish indeed upon the dawn of my fort's retreat. Somehow I doubt that. Um, yes. Now, allow me to furnish you with a little advice. I would take great care to avoid Godric's tarnished hunts. Oh, issues. okay. That depraved lot are obsessed with sacrificing tarnished like you for the sake of grafting. Mm. Honestly, Godric's nothing more than a jumped-up country bumpkin. Lord, oh, don't make me laugh. First, he hid himself amongst the women folk to flee the capital, then hid from Radan in that castle. Oh. Then he insulted Melania, lost to her in battle, only to lick her boots rather than die like a man. <laughs> Has he no shame? The big girl's blouse. Interesting. Think, he's the blood of Godfrey, last of the golden lineage. Though you almost wouldn't know it to look at him. Huh. Yeah. I almost feel sorry for the chap the more I think of it. Interesting. So this dude, Godfrey, or Godfrey, Godric, definitely seems pretty, uh, kind of wretched, right? He is, uh, I mean, one, he I seems hid, cowardly, he loses, uh, and then he's got these, um, tarnished hunts where he's, like, you know, hunting tarnished down for, to sacrifice us, which is interesting, uh, but he's, you know, like I said before in the previous videos, you know, his name, he's got that god prefix to it, like the other names, Godfrey, Godric, uh, god win and then we heard about lord godfrey before it was on that uh little sword memorial where it was like lord godfrey was his armies you know unvanquished unconquered all that and then he loses his he loses his grace due to uh queen merica and you know it definitely made it seem like that old um 
whatchamacallit. Oh, Godric should be pretty important because he's part of the Golden Lineage, which is a big deal. Uh, now, we notice going into this fort, one, it's it's all rigged up to be a defensive hold. Ooh, that's unfortunate. And there's a bunch of demi-humans trying to come in, which lines up with what that ghost said. Something about their, like, leader, their queen being taken, something, right? And now they're all upset. He mentioned their wrath. So they're trying to get back at something, and so it... Like I said, it lines up with what we're seeing right here. And there's a little minor illusory or tree thing. So that can be pretty good for us. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. And whoa, uh, there are some dead demi-humans right there. And we see there's like a big, a big body right there. Look, look at that. It's got a, like a beast head. And we got some rats and um, freaking fire pots trying to mess this up. And we're finding these blood roses. And what did he say about that knight commander from Stormvale? He's mad and obsessed with blood. And then there are these blood roses. I imagine it's not just a coincidence. Like, there are some things that, you know, like I said, sometimes old Miyazaki from Soft is going to just kind of plant things in there to just make you draw connections that don't actually mean anything. But you know that is definitely there for a reason here. Like, it's too obvious. Oh, and there he is. All right, so he's like a Knight of Godric. You know, I mean, they said he came from Stormvale Castle, so yes, it makes sense that he would be a knight like this. Oh. Nice. Whew, big hit. Ooh, good stagger. Oh, I wanted the healing back. That's fine. Ooh, Ash of War Bloody Slash. All right. Let's go ahead and collect this too. Another Blood Rose. So let's read those couple things and see if it like tells us anything. The Blood Rose is right here. Blood slick roses that bloom in blood-soaked soil. Particularly beloved by those who serve the Lord of Blood. Glory to his inevitable reign. Alright, so there's a Lord of Blood. Alright, sure enough. Uh, and then we've got the Ash of War. Bloody Slash, a Blood Oath skill granted by the Lord of Blood. From a low stance, coat the blood the blade in your own blood to unleash a rending bloody slash in a wide arc. Only usable on swords. Uh, so you, when you do it, it'll make your sword do like some bleeding infliction. Uh, and it also takes a little bit of your health in order to use it. And now we get a Dectus Medallion left. And we remember the Finger Crone mentioned something. Two halves of a medallion. So it's a left half of a split medallion depicting the Erd Tree. And you can see it a little bit there. Uh, brandishing the medallion with both halves conjoined will activate the grand lift of Dectus connecting Altus Plateau to Liurnia. The right half is said to reside in Fort Faroth in Dragonborrow, far to the east. And I mean, if we look east, I mean, we saw some castles. There's a castle right there. Is that Fort Faroth there? Like, you know, we'd have to go over there and find it. And it seems like if we want to actually make it up this grand lift, like the Finger Crone suggests, we're going to need to go get it. Hey, bud, we did it. Sure did. Excellent news. Just wonderful. And the knight's dead to boot. Mm -hmm. Well done, my friend. I knew I was right to trust you. Now, here's your reward. As go ahead. Erd Steel Dagger. Interesting. Right then. Time for me to head to the fort. I've much to do. First, I'll have to reestablish communication with the demi-humans. What's that look? Well, under the earth tree, co-mingling with the demi-humans is made possible. Hmm. Even the Valda shall not be left behind under the rule of true order. Which is why I, Kenneth Height, next in line as the rightful ruler of Limgrave, have sworn to uphold it. Just you watch, my friend. So it is really neat. He actually has, like, a noble idea where he's actually going to, like, you know, he's not just, like, kick out these other things. He's like... Under this, like, all things, you know, like, they can mingle together. Under the Erd Tree, they can work together, which is pretty neat. Uh, let's take a look at that uh, Erd Steel Dagger. Erd Steel Dagger with a grass crest engraved upon its blade, carried by the Erd Tree Royalty for self-defense in times of peace. Though forged to a high standard, the weapon is difficult to wield. Attack power also scales with faith. Interesting. So it does take faith in order to use it. Hmm. All right. So we're, I just went to go east. We find an item here, Arteria Leaf, right? I'm just traveling east along this road. I didn't go along here, right? I came partway this way, and I decided to go here. I don't see you, though. 
And I would like to note there was an item there, so it was totally there to bait you into coming this direction so you could hear this voice and go find him. Why won't anyone look me in the eye? I'm, I'm not that ugly, am I? Hello? Did you hear that noise? It was a lot like the demi-humans. Oh, but look at him. I didn't mean nothing, dude. Oh, yeah, gnarly, dude. Stubby little, little tail thing, too. Huh. But he's got clothes on. He looks like he's actually dressed nice, unlike the rest of the demi-human kind of guys we've seen. Oh, yes. I remember. Some clod turned me into a tree. <laughs> yeah. You were just breaking the spell, weren't you? Yep. Thank you. The name's Bok. I was pushed out of the cave. Told not to come back. Not ever. Then I ended up as a tree. Hmm. Lucky you came along, really. Alright. Oh, what a shame. When they threw me out of the cave, they took everything I owned. And so this is all I have to express my thanks. I hope you can forgive me. Mushrooms. Ten of them. Well, if you can afford to wait for a while could sneak back into the cave and bring back something of actual value then i'd be of some real use to you i reckon okay right but i'll need a moment i'm i'm frightened of them so i have to gather myself my knees start knocking just thinking about that god awful cave on the shore all right, so he's going to a cave on the shore. There's a couple of shorelines we can go to. We were already on this one, and there wasn't anything there. Plus, we're, like, really far to the west. So there's a big shoreline here, and there's a little shoreline there. So we're going to go check out this one, you know, for reasons. Oh, but since we're here, uh, you know, I'll talk to Kale. There's a couple of things we can get from him. Well, you're back. Oh, and about the Howling and Mistwood, right? There was that guy we saw, or guy, something. You know, it says Bly's a half-wolf. He's howling. In the mistwood, I suppose he must still be skulking about. I know. Why not meet him for yourself next time you hear the wolf's howl? Make this signal right under the source. Oh, don't fret. I just have an inkling the two of you might hit it off. All right, finger snap. So he uh, he knew what that was, which is cool. And that's something as you go through the game. If you start, like, finding things or you got some, like, questions, maybe you found out something else, it always pays to go back and just, like, start talking to some of the NPCs that you've met. And you never know who's going to have something to say about it or, you know, more information to, like, share with you and help you. Now, we're down on that shore now, and we can see there's some demi-humans here. And we had seen this little island off in the distance before, and it's actually pretty close. And he's got those runes that we'd seen as well. Yeah. I mean, it really looks like we can make it, except, you know, we definitely cannot get across that water. You can see the edge, the drop-off edge. Ooh, the last shard. Hey, Ray. And here's the cave. Very dark. But luckily, you know, we have a torch that will illuminate the way for us. Coastal cave. And there he is. Bok. Game stuttered for hard. Hey, bud. What are you doing here? You must leave this place at once. They'll rush in and beat you to a pulp. You'll end up just like me. Anything else? Oh. Alright, ah, uh, we got this. We're a big, tough warrior. Got ourselves some cave moth. Moss. It's pretty helpful. Uh, you can totally go through this without a torch, but let me tell you, it sucks. <laughs> it's so hard to see. That's why I really like picking up a torch. So this is pretty much the only direction to go, but if we look, there's a summon sign. What is it? Old Knight Istvan. So it's another, like, uh, NPC guy. We'll summon him just to see, like, what he's about, right? There he is. Oh, he's got a sword like those warrior dudes, and he's got 
his armor looks kind of like rusted patches almost like his patches of rust but it's got like look at the front it's all and even the shoulder plate you know it's got like it scales like gross of like i don't know chips and stuff on it interesting but then we move into here we can see there's a bunch of demi humans moving right there let's go ahead and just summon our wolves i guess gonna make this whole thing a big party demi human chief and there they are look at that big thing so it must be a lot like that thing we found in the uh fort height right we saw a big form it looked like a lot like this because see how the face is kind of elongated it's a lot like the body that we found the only difference is kind of the closing right this thing has some big like i don't know, like furs across it and stuff whereas that other one just had like a looked like a chain coif on the head was like a loincloth there's a big one there we go. cool and we did it tailoring tools sewing needle Wolves are just tearing into dudes, and there goes Istvan. Wolves are still going. We're gonna collect these shiny silvery bits, silver fireflies. And now he's trying to cower. It's hard to see because see, there he is. They gave up because we took out their leader. Uh, wolves aren't gonna quit though, unfortunately for them. And there's a little portal that takes us back to the beginning of the dungeon. But if you look the cave keeps going so we're gonna keep kind of going and explore it rather than uh, go back to the beginning yet now as we move to the end of the tunnel it opens back out and we can see more or less immediately that we are now on the other side of some water and that's where there was a merchant and there's the entrance to the cave right there which obviously leaves us at this island so we can go ahead and we can check out those ruins that we saw so we zoom in church of dragon communion Okay, I, I mean, they. one of the incantations mentions dragon knights. Look at these busted old statues. And what looks to be a dragon. And some kind of gnarly looking flame, once again, in a basin. Examine altar, ritual of dragon communion. Ah, oh, so we can learn some dragon spells. One of the incantations of dragon communion transforms the caster into a dragon incantation of those who have hunted dragons and feasted upon their hearts they excuse me theirs is a pure and overwhelming power yep that's what they all say so interesting so we can learn some like dragon type spells we at least cleared that up so we're back and we can talk to bach and see what he has to say oh. what are you doing here give him the sewing needle well hold on i didn't actually read it i had to make sure i do that Let's see sewing needle large sewing needle curved like a fang balk the demi human's prized possession and then we've got tailoring tools portable set of tailoring tools enables armor alterations at sites of grace oh we must leave this plan. let's give it to him And then we get a very long and drawn out animation here. <sighs> what made you go and do a thing like that? My mum was a seamstress, and that sewing kit was all I had to remember her by. I always wanted to be just like sweet old mum. <sighs> then I s suppose I, I can't just curl up and die, can I? This is interesting, right? Like, it was his mom a demi-human as well? You know? Like, is... I mean, he obviously has some personality and something to him. So you can, you know, extrapolate that most of the other demi-humans probably have, like, you know, personalities and, like, their own individual identities as well. Uh, but it's just an interesting thought to think that there would be, like... You know, he's like, my mom was a seamstress too. Like, all right. Thank you. Wanted to be a seamster like like my mum. Nice. All right, so he's not going to say anything else from here. So we can go and take care of some other things. I mean, while we're thinking about it, I mean, there is 
this bit of you know coastline as well that we can go and check out but we're around where that coastline was at and it's way down there but look at these edges like look how this like all these columns and stuff are built into the sides of the place like you know this whole thing used to be something so much more and massive before everything just started to get absolutely ruined and there's also you look on this side there's water spewing out of there a bat hanging above us but look there's like this jumpy platform so you could like do some jumping stuff somewhere over there to make your way down or back up so perhaps oh hello perhaps there's something around here to help us out and there's a campfire down there you can see it there's a fire and somebody walking so there's something down there we can go down there it's just a matter of how do you do it i see something over here it's a site of grace all right so that's good that's a good thing to have especially if we could potentially fall off and you know eat it <laughs> but look right there there's a little spring wind will thing so we're going to be able to just jump right down into there oh there's a land some land octopus as well interesting uh, so let's go ahead and jump it. We're going to go check it out. And there's our mysterious guy. I'm sure he's friendly, right? <laughs> uh, if we take a look at him before he starts aggroing. He's got no... He's got a loincloth on. He's got these white markings on him. He looks kind of gray and old. Pointed ears, kind of like an elf. The markings on him, to me, they look almost look like like disease to me like it doesn't look like he's got like tattoos like it looks like a growth or something and that waist piece is a uh it's got like oh god i don't remember him doing that <laughs> uh it's got like a squared buckle piece to it i'm dodging not very well uh and see again another one of those people or enemies with a uh like emaciated abdomen like look it's he's all sunken in a bit it's not quite as bad as say the trolls but it's still it's still like that and notice when he gets hit i believe i saw like a whitish blood right yeah it's some whitey silver it's not red there he goes and he goes down ash of war gravitus and now we can get a good look at him a bit because he's not moving anymore look at that yeah see to me that looks like he like it's just something nasty on him almost or maybe not you know maybe you know it's it, maybe it's something else but look at the belt buckles too there's all kinds of symbols across those things huh and the fact that he's got like very pointed ears he's very distinct he's not like you know a regular human being obviously he's big uh but the the pointed ear aspect of it to me just really makes it apparent that he's not the same uh gravitus it gives us magic affinity and the skill originating from the alabaster lords who had skin of stone okay so that could explain why he looks a little different why he's got some markings like it's a marbling or something you know alabaster so you thrust the gr the armament into the ground and creates a gravity will. In addition, dealing damage that pulls enemies in. And we saw it was a couple of his attacks. Like he did a big shockwave thing that pulled me. He sent a purple projectile that hit me and pulled me in. So he has like gravity stuff going on. Oh, and we got a Halig Drake talisman. What does that do? A talisman depicting a golden ancient dragon. Boosts holy damage negation. The ancient dragons who ruled in the prehistoric era before the Ur tree would protect their lord as a wall of living rock. And so it is that the manor of the dragon had become symbolic of all manor protections. So they ruled in a prehistoric era before the Ur tree. Well, there's another group that was also before the Ur tree, and that were the beasts. We saw that with it described it in the bestial fling, and how before the Ur tree, they this was the first tool they used. When they first gained intelligence so i didn't mean to do that uh interesting so dragons and beasts existed before the ur tree oh there's a big knight there we got a new skill determination i am not gonna fight him on the horse i don't like that look at that dude he's like black cloaked horse 
Looks all hooded up. He's got a giant old glaive on him. Look at that. Knight's Cavalry. Okay. Maybe we can get it with one of these. Oh yeah, missed us. Doing alright so far. At least fully heavily armored. Black plumes. I mean, it fits with the idea that it's a Knight Cavalry. And really, if you came across this bridge during the day, guess what? You would not find this guy. You only find him at night. Hmm. Unfortunately, there's not really much else to try and draw from, like, not that I can think of as far as, like, is there anything else to learn about him from here? Like, I I don't think so. Like, he's he's a Black Knight-looking dude. He shows up at night. His name is Knight's Cavalry. He's got a horse. Ow. Nice. Ooh, good one. That'll give us some health back, too. And then maybe we can finish him off with some nicer little square off. Down he goes. Now, he can summon his horse back as well. You can also defeat him without getting rid of the horse as well. And we got an Ash of War from that. Repeating Thrust. I don't think that's going to tell us any kind of lore interesting things. Not like Golden Vow, which will tell us things. Or, um, you know, the Bloody Slash. So, Repeating Thrust. Twist to build power, unleash a, a flurry of thrusts. Yep. Pretty straightforward. But look at, around us. There's like leaves falling. It's like, you know, it talked about in the early flower how, you know, things used to rain from the earth tree in ages past to feed the early flowers. So it, it to me, it kind of implies like it doesn't happen anymore, but clearly it's happening. And then we've got this. Here are some trolls we can take a look at because they're not really doing anything right now except walking with big old stakes through them which apparently has not killed them, and they're pulling a giant cart. And we see these carts at the gatefront ruins as well. It's where we got a sword. You can get a flail from one of them too. And now there's another one that these guys are pulling. And they are, like, just forced into it. And those stakes are not meant to come out because they've got barbs pointing backwards. They do not get removed, which is kind of crazy and cruel. I feel a little bad for them, you know? But we're going to stop the train because if you go and you look behind them, there will be a big group of guys coming along. And all along this route, there's actually, like, a ton of, like, little, like, noble guys and stuff that are just, like, milling about, digging at the ground, like, doing something, looking for something, just being crazy. And here's some of these warrior dudes, and, I mean, he's not attacking those dudes, so he seems to be on the same side. At least that's what it implies right here, right? Let's see if we can get... Yeah, that's what I thought. Owie. Oh, I didn't get my second attack out. Oh, I, want this. I wanted the critical attack so I could get a heal out. And look, there's a ton more. We've got more of these, like, little nobly peasant-looking dudes. Uh, we don't really care about the cart anymore. We've looted it. Uh, but look, there's, like, a bunch of these dudes. Which, he has the same hat that Bok was wearing. And then, this dude is, like... Uh, one of those uh, nobles, right? And we got a brass shield. That's cool. Too bad it's like, super heavy. Uh, but what did we say? He was a glintstone noble. What did he call him? Just a noble sorcerer. And those are just wandering nobles. And they've got soldiers of Godric. Like they're being like guarded in this profession procession. So they definitely like are kind of sided together. Now these nobles, an interesting thing from them is you can get roa fruit from them and if you end up reading the description on it i believe it says that you can use it to uh feed the uh torrent but there's something else interesting about it that's not immediately in that item description so if we go and we look very like red fruits that grow in shrubs material used for crafting items right but then we've got if we look in our item crafting We've got the raisins. Remember, we had the frozen raisins that we got from one of those uh, big warrior dudes. And you can use it to feed torrent. This one says feed torrent to restore HP. But if you read the description on it, it's a preparation of dried roa fruit. Feed it to torrent, restores HP. Then humans are unable to digest roa fruit, but torrent seems to have a taste for it. So it's really interesting that these nobles, these wandering nobles, have 
roa fruit because they're crazy like they they're just eating food that they can't actually digest like it's not doing anything for them so like you know it's they are definitely crazy because uh they're eating food that they can't eat oh i missed that's unfortunate Ooh. Oh, I ran out of stamina. <laughs> there he goes. Ooh, a dismounter. All right, so that's the sword that we saw Istvan, the old knight, using. Old knight Istvan. And, I mean, obviously, it's what these guys are using. Uh, so what does it describe? Uh, wherever it's at. There we go. Curved great sword wielded by the brawny cell swords of Kaiden. Combines a blade of a scimitar with a heft of a hatchet. So they're cell swords of Kaiden. Kaiden, however you say it. Difficult to handle weapon demands much of the wielder's strengths and dexterity, dexterity, but with practice and ability can serve as a versatile weapon, even on horseback. Uh, so, see, like, they're dropping ruin fragments, they're, like, scrapping up stuff, dropping roa fruit. And even around these runes and stuff, what do we find? More ruin fragments. Uh, I feel bad I took them out, but I wanted more flasks back. Uh, so, before we keep going south, there is a section of runes right here and then right there look at that that's a plot of uh graves so we're gonna go into here and then we can continue exploring and there's a flower look at that you see it there to me that's a nasty looking flower i that's probably harsh to say it's i mean it's a flower man except uh look at that poison clouds and then you got that thing it flowers don't move like that man and then it does a big poof like that that's gonna poison us so we're gonna leave it alone but i bet you know if you use fire on it it's going to do pretty well. But here's a little rune. And on the other ones we found, like in the uh, gate side runes, like right up here, gate front, it was just a small room with an item in it. This has a boss fog in it. So there's something in here to fight. And it's one of these guys, a mad pumpkin head. So that's what they're called. And we've seen a few of them, and they definitely seem kind of mad, right? The one on the bridge was just repeatedly bashing his head on his hammer on the ground like whatever he could like he just did not have any sense left to him it seemed and you notice when we do hit the head it doesn't do like any damage at all because of course it's a big heavily armored spot now we've got him there with the dagger we'll be able to heal up rip oh huge damage let's go ahead and slice him up with another square off oh he was still recovering and down he goes and then we got a door where we can find some kind of item or something, right? Except it's not. It is somebody with blue crystals and fancy looking robes, red and blue. And it's a whole big stone head with crystals coming out of it. Her crystals are green. Is there significance in that? You know, maybe these things are all blue. Tarnished, are we? No wonder you should turn up here. I am Salen, a sorcerer, quite plainly. Why are you here? I want to learn sorcery. Ah, a yen for glimstone sorceries. I dare say your proclivities are far from ideal. He's calling you stupid. Oh well, perhaps nurture will defy nature. With a bit of luck. But one must choose one's masters wisely. I was exiled from the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. Hmm. As a reviled, apostate witch. Well, we've met one witch. Yeah, we met this witch Rena, but she didn't look anything like this, right? And she had weird arms, double ghost face and stuff. Uh, we still want to learn. <laughs> well, you are a piece of work. Very well. You are now my protege in Glimstone Sorcery. She accepted that but really easily. Or cast kind words. Never. Anticipate grievances, young apprentice. Huh. And look on her head. She's got Sorcerer Selen. Not in thought. And look across the top. She's got like um almost like a laurel of leaves on the crown, which is, or on the on the crown on the on the helmet thing mask. No feet. Now one thing that's kind of interesting. She's wearing a uh, a necklace. Okay. Wonder if that's part of the robes. So I have this thought, and I don't know this for sure. There is an. A, a, a talisman you can buy from the twin maiden husks in the round table hold uh that looks a little bit like that but it's an illusionary one yeah, it makes you look first. different first things first you are a tadpole when it comes to magic infantile without the legs to walk so 
To become a sorcerer, first, you must face your ignorance. Now, shall we start learning? All right, study sorcery. Glintstone Pebble, most basic sorcery of her uh, Academy of Raya Lucaria. The Glintstone serves as a conduit launching magical projectiles at the foe. It can be cast repeatedly. It is a universal first step on the journey to true knowledge of sorcery. And then there's Glintstone Stars. It fires three magic shooting stars that pursue the target. Uh, sorcery of Olivenus Conspectus, which attracts sorcerers from Celia, town of sorcery. And then there's a glintstone arc, a horizontal arc of magic, granted the sorcerers who depart from the academy to embark on journeys in order to fend off large groups of would-be adversaries, fools often roam in packs. Crystal Barrage, a sorcery of the Crystal Cadger, a group of sorcerers who pursue the wisdom of stone. The secrets locked in the faint cognition or cogitation of the crystallians well she has a stone head thing so does she belong to this group and she's got crystals coming out of her head scholars armament uh, taught to the knights of the cuckoo by the academy as payment for their contract okay so these knights had a contract with the academy and so they taught them magic all right and then scholar shield teach you know puts magic on there also taught to the knights of the cuckoo now, I think as we buy things, she'll have more to say to us. But for right now, uh, we don't really have that right now. <laughs> so uh, there are, let's see, two more things I want to do here before we call this video. First, we have this signal to go and talk to Bly's Half-Wolf. So we're going to do that. And look at that. <laughs> There's a picture, huh? Dude was a wolf face. I wonder who that could be. All right, we're back circle around and then we do the sign right there boom and there he is and he is big who goes there Carly sent you did he never the bloody busybody hmm maybe to him you don't seem so strange okay name's Blythe I'm looking for a man who goes by Darrow Never met him. Somewhere nearby. Or so I've heard. Come tell me if you find him before I do. I can offer you ample reward. All right. Darrowell is nothing but a traitor, and in need of a fitting end to his tale. All right. So we've not met anybody like that. Let's take a look at this dude. I mean, he's definitely got a wolf head. Look at the eyes. It's kind of like purplish, right? He's got a fancy sword, like very fancy. Look at the jewels and stuff on it. Inscriptions. Big fur cloak. He's got. He's well armored. Like the dude is set. But the purple room makes me think of the uh, beast eye. Right. It's got that violet iris to it, which ties in with the symbols of death. Uh, so we need to help him find this guy named Darrowill. Uh, so we're gonna go off and kind of wander around a little bit and see if we can't find that. All right, so traveling up here, we went south a little ways, like kind of west and south of him. We're on this other edge, and there's like the edge of the map that we have. But we can see there's a symbol here that's a lot like this one over here. And so we get up there, and there's more of these things looking down at it. And we didn't check out the other one. It's the Forlorn Hound Everjail with some kind of crazy symbol on it, some bluish magic. Uh, we act, go ahead and we interact with it. And what are we going to find? And we see there's a summon thing. We're in a different zone. It's all shadowy version of it, which is interesting. It's like it transported us into a shadowed version of the world in a way. And there's some mark over there. And look, it's summon sign for Bly's half wolf. So I think we maybe found Darewill. Now you could do this first and then find him, like try and beat him and then maybe tell him about it. And then, or you could beat him and then come back over here and you'll let him know and all that kind of stuff. This is where it ends for you. So this dude's a traitor and he's in a jail. Bloodhound Knight Darewill. Bloodhound. All right. Oh, jeez. I missed that. That's a good hit of damage. Nice. I want that health back. Sorry. That's a huge amount of damage. The, the sword has an extra bit of critical damage. Which is working out really nicely for our critical hits here. Because, um... 
I mean, we're, in, we're getting health. The counter strikes do a huge amount of posture damage. It works out wonderfully. Easy fight. <laughs> and we get the Bloodhound's Fang. Look at that tear. It's like a rent. But it's got kind of a shape to it, right? It reminds me a little bit of that shape of the grace or humanity from the previous games. And there is Blyze. Right. There you are. Not to work for it, but it's done. Don't say I'm not a man of my word. Here's your prize. It's gonna be a dagger. Oh, a smithing stone. Somber one. That's different than the others. Oh, yes. I should say. If you venture north to Rhea Lucaria and come across a venerable blacksmith who's a little on the large side, tell him I sent you. And he'll be sure to treat you right. Okay. I owe you one, I reckon. Sweet. Appreciate it. That's enough chit chat for now. This time we part in ways. Okay, anything else? That's enough chit chat. This time we part in ways. Alright, well, good meeting you, I guess. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at that sword. A uh, curved great sword with a gently undulating blade wielded by Bloodhound Knights. A fearsome blade capable of brutal airborne attacks. It's got a very cool uh, Ash War. The sword itself is pretty phenomenal. And you can get it very early. It's upgrades with the somber smithing stones. Like, you know, it's just a perfect setup of everything. Uh, but since we've done that, we know that had some kind of boss guy in it. So now we should go check out this other one that I never finished looking at before. So we'll go do that. Oh, okay. Uh, so here's a, gi a giant thing. It looks like it's on fire. It's huge. It's got, I don't know, it's got an interesting design to it. Stone helmet. Definitely having to attack it like we do with the uh, trolls. Oh, I tried to roll backwards to avoid that, and I messed up. Oh, I'm doing all kinds of bad things. Heal up now. Go ahead and get that. There's the stagger. And then we go in here, and look, it's got like a fiery core to it. And that's where the weak spot is at. Hmm. Smithing stone. Interesting. All right. So that was kind of crazy. I mean, we see the, some of the ruins around. Like, look there. Like, way embedded in the ground. We see a bunch of them there. And it's got, like, that was on the back of the one we fought as well. It's got, like, a weird, like, I don't know what you call that. Like, it looks like something would settle there in a way. Very interesting looking. Storm Hill Everjail. All right. And here we are. No summon signs this time. And there is the rent and a crucible knight. He's pretty cool looking. And look at that armor. Heavily armored. He's got like blades. His shield has like a horn. It makes me think of like a dragon claw or horn or something like that, right? Big ol' uh, freaking sword as well. Oh, I missed. That sucks. Okay. like to be able to shield bash as well Ooh, the recovery on that's too long there's a ground stomp swing and then one two good stagger now we can heal off of this which is great we have to continue being pretty careful though because we're not doing a lot of damage now his chest piece is kind of interesting because it's got some like black dot like thing on the center some of the coloration is weird though so we can't it's hard for me to tell like what kind of colors he's got going on and there's also like some kind of symboly section on his cape and now he's summoning wings uh you know we hit that phase two mark oh and now there's a tail we need to heal though we got to be careful because he'll do that you know he's definitely ready to punish us for trying to heal so we have to make sure we're doing things right and waiting for the right time all right go oh there's a tail Ooh. owie roll back oh i messed it up dang i think that was my first time dying since since uh battling uh margit and we can uh respond at the stake of america we're gonna we're gonna beat him uh i can do it just gotta be a little more careful oh damn it dude oh i didn't stagger him 
I was really counting on that staggering him. I have no more heals left, so I have to be very careful, especially for some of those tail swipes. They can come out kind of fast and I mess up the dodges. Oh, it's still not staggering. God dang it, dude. Ah. Look at the shield, too. Like, it's got kind of, like, veiny sections around, like, the indentations. Like, I, you know, I, I want to say root, but I don't know that root is, like, the right word. It, it is interesting, though. Like, it, it does give me some reminiscence of, like... Is it? There's something. It's making me think of something. Almost got him. I need more blue back, though. Ah, oh, too long. Yo, before he thrusts. Roll. Oh, come on. I can use this as an opportunity to heal, but we can watch out for the tail. That has some, like, massive range to it. Almost. Yay, there we go. Took me uh, three tries. Three tries. One, two. Might have been four. Aspects of the Crucible Tale. All right. Now that's an incantation, and we'll take a look at what it says. Crucible. A crucible is like something that forges and like remakes something. All right, you think of like, uh, for like, what do you see? You know, it's like a place fire. You put it in there. Something that's going to like challenge and heat and whatever uh spells one of the ancient erd tree incantations creates a supple tail that sweeps through foes before the caster charging will enhance it it's a manifestation of the erd tree's primal vital energies an aspect of the primordial crucible where all life was once blended together so an ancient erd tree incantation from primal vital energies the primordial crucible huh and i mean in our shield thing it talks about the primordial matter that became the erd tree so is that like that red gold color again man there's still like other things see this is a problem right where i'm struggling a little bit there's so much you can do in here and explore it and like learn because like i'm ready like you're totally ready to go in and deal with margit now but there's still other places we haven't touched all in and along here there's a whole pass down here that is totally a section you can go through before dealing with Stormvale. There's even sections over here to deal with it too. Like there's there's so much to do. It's it's such a challenge to pick and choose like what to do. Uh, but that'll I think I'm gonna call it there. You know I think that's a good stopping point. It's been long enough. Uh, thank you guys for checking it out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll decide what I'm gonna do on the next one. I have to I have to make some choices. But until then, take care.